All right, everybody, let's do the homework for T20. Here is Fartanoid in its final form. Not really. I might do more with it, but uh, this is what it is for now. Let's get rid of this cursor off the freaking screen. And let's hope that the sirens don't come back. And yeah, we got a nice title screen. You press enter and you get a little, a little start message, a little muzak to set the mood. And then there we go. We're off to the races. So as you can probably see already, depending on where I hit the ball, the angle is now going to be different. See, it's a more uh, straight up and down angle. And there's, well, there it was. I just failed hard. And you see, I got multiple lives going up on this bitch. And I got like a fucking sweet border. And look at the fucking bricks. They got like, looks like 3D shading on that motherfucker. It's so good. I made the paddle a little smaller and shit and all the good stuff. You got in the, in the top right hand corner there, left hand. You learn your left and right, chili. But anyways, in the top left-hand corner, you got the uh, the lives indicator. And we use a little bit of spriting stuff there, but... Um, yeah, it's about it. I don't think there's anything else I really did. I can't remember anyways. I didn't do the background, because fuck that. I didn't, I didn't add a sprite for the paddle, because I was like, well, it's either going to be a dick, or it's going to be, like, a turd. And if I do a dick, I got the risk of, you know, getting my video taken down. And if I do a turd, well, I got to find a good turd that is in the shape of a paddle. And I couldn't find one, so I was like, fuck it. You know what? I'm just going to use a fucking rectangle because that's good enough. Uh, and these guys here, well, you'll see what a bit, but this isn't sprites. This is actually fucking just calculated. I calculated these fucking shadings on these bricks here. It's so good. It's dynamic. Like the border as well. But anyways, we'll get to that when we get to that. So... Um, yeah, you can sync with the uh, repository if you don't got all this shit. I did a lot of changes here. We're going to go over them, uh, you know, post hoc. Don't know if that's the right use of that word. But anyways, let's let's check out the first commit I did here. So the first thing I did was uh, game over when ball hits bottom of wall's boundary because it was easy. So I added a fart sound. And let's look at what did I do in ball.h? What did I do? Okay, so in the do wall collision function here, I made it so instead of returning a bool, it returns an int. That can return three different states. Either no collision, hit one of the walls, or hit the bottom. So now in ball.cpp, we just basically we do the same thing, but instead of just setting collided to true, we're going to set this collision result depending on where we collided. If we collided with the bottom, we're going to set that shit to two. And return collision result, and in game dot... What do we do in game dot h? Oh, I added the sound effect for the fart. And in game dot cpp, we... Ah, okay, so we added a game over variable, apparently. Where is it? Game dot h. Did I do it? Yeah, there it is. It was, it was being hidden by this thing. But yeah, so game over bool and a sound. Here, we only... We only do. We only update if the game is not over. And here, so we do the ball, the ball to the wall to bang the bang diggy. But we remember the result int. And then if it's a one, we reset the cooldown. We play the thing normal. But if it's a two, we set the game over to true. We say we play the fart noise. And then again, if we're if we're not game over, we draw the ball. We draw the pad. So, and when we reach game over. We don't draw the ball on the pad. We just draw the bricks. That's to show, hey, it's game over. Because I haven't added the title screen and the game over screen yet. But anyway, so that's that. Okay, good. Good changes. Good times. Let's, let's get moving. All right. Now, here's the thing that was probably going to be the hardest. And that's the setup for the better, better paddle uh, collision. So, uh, basically... To have varied angle of uh, deflection depending on where the ball lands on the paddle, because I don't know if you if you reviewed the game day footage, but the way that Arkanoid works is um, well. Let me show you. Let me fucking draw some pictures here. We got the pictures. Let's draw the pictures. All right. So you got your fucking paddle here, and uh, like I mean, normally you got a ball. If it hits the angle here, it's gonna bound off like this. If it hits here same angle of incidence, it's going to bound off the same angle, but that's not how it works in Arkanoid. It doesn't fucking matter what angle you hit the paddle at. If you hit the paddle on the end, it's going off in this direction. If you hit the paddle on this end, it's going off in this direction. If you hit the paddle in the middle, well, we'll talk about that later. But I mean, if you hit the paddle closer to the middle, it's not going to go off 
as much. It's going to be closer to vertical. That's the idea. That's what we want to aim for. So first thing I do is I do a little setup for that, I guess. I don't know. I can't remember. Let's take a look at what I did here. Ball.h. What did I do here? So I added a function to allow us to set the direction of the ball because obviously we're going to want to change the uh, direction that's moving in. We want it to move at the same speed. So no matter what, we want it to keep a constant speed, but we want the direction to change when it rebounds off the paddle depending on, you know, where it hits the paddle. So set direction function is going to do what? And it's going to here. All right. So in here, well, let's go down to set direction first. So what set direction does is you pass it in a vector. It normalizes that vector, multiplies by speed to get the velocity and sets the velocity to that. That's all it does. So it allows you to set the direction, but the velocity is controlled by the ball itself. Or not the velocity, the speed, right? The velocity is the, uh, the speed times the direction vector. Then in the uh, constructor here, instead of passing in a velocity, what I do is I allow the user to pass in a direction, and then in the constructor body here, we call set direction with that. And good times were had by all. So in ball.h, we add, yeah, we add speed now, because the speed is going to be determined by the ball itself, and uh, yeah, good times, good. Okay, now what else? What else do you want from me, game? All right, so in ball, we change the uh, change the constructor a bit here. Since we're not passing in the velocity, we're just passing in the direction. I just make it negative one, negative one. Didn't matter. It could have remained the same. It wouldn't have changed anything. I just did that for reasons. What else did I do here? Oh, yeah. And in this uh, function here, do ball collision. So I test if this condition is true, else if this condition is true, both of these result in rebound y. So I consolidate them into one test here with an or, logical or. And that's for reasons that will become apparent in the next thing. So here, impact position dependent on exit angle, but. So what does that mean? Well, what we do here is instead of calling rebound y, which, as you remember, just reflects in the y direction, uh, reflects the y component, now what we're going to do here is we're going to get the difference between the, the center of the ball and the position of the... because uh, this is a paddle, right? So position is the center of the paddle. So we get the difference... Let's go into motherfucking whatever we got here. I don't want to undo all this. Well, I guess I'm going to do it now. So if the ball is going to hit here, what we're, what we're calculating is this, this difference here. It's a sign difference between uh, the ball center and the paddle center. And I guess it's the sign difference from the paddle to the ball. Right. So the ball is bigger, if the ball is more to the right, it'll be positive. If it's to the left, it'll be negative. Good. Then we calculate a vector for the direction. And the vector for the direction is just a constant negative 1 in the y, and then the x difference. So, again, you know, if, uh, you know, if the x difference is this, the direction is going to be this plus... You know, where is it? This. The uh, y negative 1. And that'll be a vector like this, right? So we do that. And then we set direction to that thing. Great. Only it doesn't fucking work. Um, I guess I can show that. Wait a second. Alright, here's what that looks like. And if you hit the ball, you see it fucking just goes basically horizontal. Which is probably not what you want. But, it is what you expect if you're paying attention, right? Because, because think about it, our direction vector here is just going to be the x difference and then y negative 1. But, I mean, if our, let's say our paddle is fucking, I don't know how wide it is, but let's say it's 50 wide. If you hit the edge, you're going to have a vector that is 50 in the x, one in the y, which is pretty much god, I mean, let's move that over, let's put that here. That's pretty much almost a horizontal vector. Just going a little bit in the y. That's no good. So what we gotta do is we gotta scale, we gotta scale this difference down so that it's more in keeping, you know, with the, uh, the y. I mean, we could make the y part bigger, but I prefer to scale it down. So what I do 
how I do, let's go back to here, scale down the X component of the exit angle to something less retarded, because that's how we do. So what I did is I added a uh, float here, exit X factor. And this is what we multiply by the, uh, the X distance, so that we get something that is less retarded, and then it works. I'm not gonna show it, 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 it does the job. Uh, but, here's the thing. Here's a problem with that. Actually, I am gonna show that. Wait a sec. Here's the problem with this. So we hit the edge, we get a nice angle here. We hit the middle, it's more vertical. Let's try to hit the exact middle now. All right, let's do it. Ah, this recording software is ruining my frame rate. Fuck you! I'm trying to make a point here. The point is, if we can get it almost perfect vertical like this, we can get the ball to basically bounce up and down and fuck all the bricks up in a straight line. And that isn't so great for gameplay. It's, it, it kind of removes the difficulty of the game. So, what we want to do instead is... Alright, so what we got right now is something like this. Fuck that. That pad is too fucking fat. Fat shame in the pad. All right, so if we rebound off the edge, we're gonna get something that's pretty goddamn horizontal. And as you tend towards the middle, it gets more vertical. And if you're at the very center, it's gonna go straight up, right? This is the this is the situation that we have made for ourselves. Now, what I want, what I basically want here, is I want something like this. So in the same at the edges, it's the same deal. Pretty goddamn horizontal. And as you tend towards the middle, it gets more vertical. But when you reach a certain region. Say this is the center. You reach a certain region, it's gonna have fuck that. It's gonna have angles which remain constant. Like this. And then as you hit this region, then it starts to go more horizontal. So it'll never get if you do this situation here, it's never gonna get perfect vertical. So this region here is constant angle, either to the right or to the left. And then when you exit this center region, then it gets more and more to the left. So, to, to, to do this up in a graph situation here, if the x-axis is the, uh, the distance, the impact point from the center, and the y-axis is the, uh, the exit angle, the amount of x component in the exit angle, this situation here would look like this, right? So when there's no, this is supposed to cross zero, you get the point. So when there's no distance difference between the, the point of uh, impact and the center of the paddle, then the exit angle, the X component is gonna be zero, it's gonna be straight up. Uh, what we want is we want something like this. So it's the same idea, the idea of this thing here but in instead of going crossing the center at some point it just flats out here and I'll make that a circle and then down here make that a filled in circle so this is the graph of the function that we want to model we want this one not this one so how are we going to do that shit in motherfucking code well all right let's take a look at this one preventing the exit direction from being too vertical what do you got for me? All right, so we add another uh, variable in here, fixed zone half width, and that's the size of that zone that I told you about, the constant zone. So now we got more code because of reasons. So let's look here, what are we doing? What are we doing? All right, so fixed X component. So this is the X component of the direction in the fixed region and that's just going to be the fixed zone half width times the exit x factor so why why is that well we want this function here not to have any like gaps in it so we want this level if this is where the region starts and this is where the uh the fixed region ends we want this level here to be at the same level as the uh, the normal graph was, this graph was, at that point, at that point on the paddle, here. This is how you calculate the, uh, the x component in the fixed region. And here we go, so. Then what we do is we check to see if the, uh, the absolute value of the difference, which is, we, if it's negative, we make it positive, because we don't care about that, we just care about the magnitude. The magnitude of the difference is less than the fixed zone half width 
uh, then we check to see if the difference is negative or positive. If it's negative, then we set it we set the direction vector equal to the negative fixed component and negative one for the y. Otherwise, positive fixed x component, negative in the y. Otherwise, here it means we're outside of the fixed region, so we just multiply the difference times the x factor, do our shit. And this will give us, you know, a good fixed uh, exit angle if it's very close to the center of the paddle. That's super complicated. I don't know. I, I had a hard time. It's fucking hard to explain, but if you really want to know, if you, if you don't understand what I'm saying here and you really want to know, you come and you find me on the forum, on the Discord. We'll hash it out. Let's continue. Uh, all right. So here, I just made things a little nicer. Take a look at this. Fixed constants for paddle to be derived from specific useful specified values and to be dynamically adjusted based uh, on paddle width all right so what i did here was instead of you know specifying an x factor and fixed zone half width uh, in pixels what i do is i specify the maximum exit ratio so that is gonna be let me show you here so the maximum exit ratio is the ratio of the exit vector at the very edge of the paddle so if the maximum exit ratio is 2.6 that means that this x component is 2.6 times uh, the y component which is 1 and that's the maximum ratio you can have for the exit direction uh, so I specified that because it's more useful. You know, that's what you would want to specify. How horizontal do I want the exit to be at the worst? And fixed zone width ratio is 0 0.2. So this, instead of specifying the fixed zone as in pixels, I specify it as a ratio of the entire width of the paddle. So if the paddle grows, the fixed zone will also grow. Uh, and then here, exit x factor fixed zone half width and fixed zone exit x these are these are derived from the above they're calculated uh, based on that and based on the size of the paddle and in paddle.cpp here in the constructor i calculate those values and then i use them in here so it's just a nicer way of specifying the uh, the constants for the paddle all right now the next thing that i wanted to do uh what did i do was add the border and also make the bricks look fucking sexier now this is the original sprite sheet from arkanoid uh it's got the power-ups and all this other shit um now if you look at these bricks here you can see that they look nice and three-dimensional they look beveled and the reason for that is that the different sides they have different uh shades of the same color and that is how you tell something, you know, is three-dimensional. It's based on the lighting. Uh, now, we can do this in our system. And the way we do it is, well, if you look at this one, it's a little clearer. But you see that these bevels here, they're, they have rectangular regions and they have triangles. You can make them. They're, they're basically, they're trapezoids, right? And trapezoids can be made out of triangles and rectangular regions. So... All we got to do is be able to draw these triangles. And these simple triangles with a 45 degree angle and a right angle, they can be drawn with a very simple for loops. So that is what I endeavored to do. Adds, first of all, I add some simple triangle drawing routines. So in graphics.cpp, I add draw iso right triangle U L U R U B L. What does that mean? What does that fucking mean? Well, Isosceles triangle is triangle basically with two angles that are the same, right? And a right triangle, that's isosceles, looks something like this. And these are the triangles that we can use to build our beveled surfaces. So you've got, there can be one like this, one like this, like this, and like this. These are the four cases that we can have. And where the right angle is, that's how I specify the triangle name. So this is upper left, this is upper right, this is bottom right, bottom left. And these are the functions to draw those triangles, filled in, of course. Um, and you just do that with fucking loops like this. For example, the upper left triangle here. So you're going to loop 
from you, your triangle's got an x and a y uh and that's the, the x and the y of the upper left part of the triangle it's got a size which is the sides of the triangle and then a color and uh what you do is you're gonna loop from y to y plus size exclusive you don't include the last one in there and for every one of these Y scan lines, you're going to draw a horizontal line. So your first line you're going to draw horizontal is going to be from X to X plus size. Your next one is going to be from X to X plus size minus one. Next one minus two, minus three, until you just draw nothing. You're over. You're done. Get out of here. So... What we do so we loop from y to y plus size and here current line is equal to what is current line uh, this is the line number so for example for the first line loop y is going to be equal to y so it's going to be zero but then the next line loop y is going to be y plus one because we added one we start with y and we add one every time so we're going to take the line number and we're going to add that well, we're going to subtract that from the extent that we're going. So in the first one, we subtract 0. Second one, we subtract 1. And that gives us this thing here. So x plus size, then x plus size, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. That's what this current line is doing. It's giving us the minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. And we loop to that, we draw our fucking triangle. It's all good. And the, the other guys here, they're basically the same idea, just a little bit flipped around. I'll let you guys figure that out, and if you don't understand it, you can come to me, and I will explain shit to you, because that's what I do. But anyways, so we, we add some triangle drawing routines. Then I create the beveler. Just create a class that helps me bevel shit. Now, the beveler... Um, what does it do? Well, it first off, it uh, remembers a bunch of colors. So you pass it a base color. And from that base color, it is going to, let me just see if I can find it, it is going to derive the different uh, shaded versions of these colors. So the darker shade, the lighter shade, for example. And it does that. Let's see where it does that. Um, well, first off, the, uh, the amount of shading, the amount of darkness of every side is determined by these factors. And the colors themselves are derived basically by where is it where's the fucking right here the set base color function so here for example base color is just equal to base in now the top color is equal to the base color for example red times the top factor so here we convert these numbers from ints into floats and then we scale them we multiply them by the factors and that is going to make them either brighter or darker so we scale the individual components and then we construct a new color out of those components and we do that for you know the top the bottom the left and the right and that gives us our shades of the sides of our bevels now to draw the bevels it's just fucking it was a pain in the ass is what it was but basically like I mean to draw where is it to draw outer bevel so Let's just take a look at some of this bullshit here. I'm not going to go over it all, obviously, because that's fucking too... Nobody got time for that. So, draw isometric right triangle bottom left. So that draws one of these guys, right? And then you're going to draw a rectangle. Next, going to draw this guy. Like this. And then you're going to draw isometric right triangle upper left. That's going to draw this guy. And there you go. You've got something like this which is part of the bevel. And then it does the same thing for the top, for the right, and for the bottom. And it gives them different shades. And uh, when it's all done, you've got a nice fucking beveled thing. It's all shaded, looks three-dimensional. It's got depth to it. It's got a lot of depth. It's got a lot of girth. And that doesn't, I don't know. Anyways, so yeah, so you draw the outer bevel, you draw the inner bevel, which is the same thing, but it's on the inside. Uh, and draw a brick is draw an outer bevel and then draw a rectangle inside of that. So also shade the inside. And draw a frame. Frame is just 
the outer bevel plus inner bevel and that gives you the frame that you saw on the motherfucking uh, what is it around the field so I do this I test the bevel uh, here I remove the bevel test all right so here I do some good shit I add a function to graphics uh, that allows me to get a rect f for the uh, the screen region and this is useful it's actually quite useful. I use it quite a lot. And then I also add a test to rectf. Uh, is contained by. So that checks to see if one rectangle is completely within another rectangle. Uh, completely within, or like none of it is outside, basically. And that's just... I mean, you can you can figure that out. I mean, that the left is greater than the left, the right... Yeah, you understand that. You don't need me to tell you about that. You can read the code. You can read code. I trust you. Now the add walls, here's where I add the walls to the goddamn game. And I actually create their own class. So what does the, the wall class has a rectangle? And that's just the inner bounds of the wall. Basically the place where the, uh, the, the ball is going to rebound off of. And you got the thickness, which is the visual, the aesthetic thickness of the drawn wall. And the beveler, which is going to draw the actual wall. And then walls.cpp, what are we doing here? We have a little assertion here to make sure that we're not defining a uh, wall region that is going to have to be drawn outside of the screen. And here we do something to be able to get the rectangle of the boundary. Because we need that. Our engine, our other entities, they don't deal with walls, they deal with rect f. So we get the rectangle there. We, we're, we're passing it out by constant reference, so we don't have to copy it every time. And here, draw, we just do beveler. Uh, draw bevel frame and with the thickness and all the good stuff here so yeah we do we draw the bevel frame and we use get expanded to get the uh, the outer rectangle of the wall all right now I mean I could just probably you know if I try to build this now it's gonna take forever all right so here's what I was talking about with the wall here you got the outer bevel like this and then you've got the inner bevel and you put them together and you get this nice little ridge here and that's that's that that's all she wrote i think it's pretty easy i think it's pretty self-explanatory i'm not gonna spend any more time on it uh incorporate wall into game there yeah, you just gotta fucking i mean it's pretty self-explanatory you, you put the wall in the game you, you put the wall in the game and you put the wall in the game you, instead of passing in the walls wrecked you pass in walls dot get inner bounds it's same thing and, and of course you gotta fucking draw the wall that's all you gotta do to incorporate the wall into the motherfucking game now fix wall layout miscalculation what did i do here i must have made a mistake uh what was this what was this divide thickness by two. Oh, okay yeah so here i was uh i was offsetting the uh, there we go we got the nice sirens again i was offsetting the inner rectangle by thickness to get the outer rectangle but the thickness that you pass in is the thickness of one bevel but there are two bevels right the inner and the outer so you actually have to pass in thickness divided by two i could have maybe changed also the draw bevel frame function that might have been a better solution but whatever i don't care chili don't care just chili crack corn and i don't care Next thing, various tweaks of size and speed. All right, I don't know what I t probably tweaked like the width of the uh, speed of the ball, the width of the the wings on the the paddle, the colored paddle. What did I do in game here? I less bricks across, smaller brick height. And all sorts of dumb bullshit that makes the uh, the field narrower. Uh, and in game.cpp. Yeah, so here, before what I was doing is to uh, to get the rectangle for the walls, I was calling get screen rect and expanding it by negative 40. And 40 was the uh, the width of the wall. So the rectangle region for the field was just the width of the, s the, the screen region uh, expanded negative 40 for the width of the visual wall 
And instead of that, what I'm doing now is, what am I doing here? So again, I do, oh, so I create a rectangle from center and I get the center by doing get screen rect dot get center. And so I create a rectangle at the center of the screen. This gives me the center of the screen. Create a rectangle at the center of the screen whose size is field width divided by two, field height divided by two. That's the half width and half height. So I must have added field width and field height into uh, the constants here. Where did I do it? Here it is. So field width is just number of bricks across times brick width. Field height is the screen height minus the wall thickness. So this, basically the field height is the entire height of the screen minus the space needed for the walls. Width is the space needed for the bricks that we have. And other things. So I basically I make it so that we can define our constants based on more useful things. Uh, calculated from other constants. It makes our life easier when we're specifying shit. Mm, I move the brick colors in here. I move the wall colors. It's all good. Just making constants. That's all. Bevel my bricks. So I have the beveling. I've got it in there already. I use it for the wall. Now I just add it to the fucking bricks. So what did I do to beveler? Oh, I added a default constructor. And the reason for that is that brick has a default constructor. So you have to be able to default construct all of its uh, components, so I added default constructor to beveler. Uh, and what else did I do? Get rid of color out of brick because beveler is going to remember all the colors that we need. And added a uh, constant here, the bevel size. And then in brick.cpp, what do we do? What do we do? Brick.draw, we call bevel draw beveled brick. And again, we expand by the negative padding, and we pass in the bevel size, we pass in the graphics. It's all good. All right. We're almost there. We're getting there. Fix brick colors to stop oversaturation and reduce brick padding. Oh, okay, here we go. All right. So, brick padding. I make the padding between bricks a little smaller, because it's not so necessary now that we have the bevels on there. It's easy to distinguish between bricks. Um... Now, the, the colors here, I just had red, green, blue. So it would be 255 red. Here's 255 green, 255 blue. But the problem is, is that the beveler, it takes the base color and it multiplies it by 1.1. So it increases the base color uh, for the left side. But the problem with that is that if we start with 255, we multiply by 1.1, we're going to get probably like somewhere around 270, 280. And 280 is too big for co colors only go from 0 to 255. So when we try to scale it up to 280, it's going to wrap around to just like, I don't know, like 25 or whatever. And that's going to be too goddamn, that's, it's going to change the color completely. It's not going to, it's going to be very dark. It should be the, the lightest part of the brick. It becomes the darkest. So what we do here is I'm just passing in values that are not quite the maximum. And that's so that it doesn't it doesn't um, overflow it doesn't overflow past 255, and that's that. Brick.h, yeah, okay, good, good times. Just some fix up here. Set the ball start condition. So I just make the ball start instead of starting at a random place. Start the ball at the center of the screen, with uh, velocity of one in the negative 0.5 in the or one one negative one in the y negative 0.5 in the x. Alright, what do we got left here? Add the title and the end screen sprite. So I added a whole shit ton of sprite calls. I'm not going to show you the CPP, but yeah, here it is. In H, added the draw title, draw game over. Beautiful. And added the game states. Alright. So now, instead of just having game over as a bool, I have an integer called game state. Zero means game has not started yet. One means playing the game. Two means the game is over. And yes, yes, I know what an enum is. Just fucking, that's for the future. Fuck off. All right. So we add the game states. And here we do tests. So instead of doing if not game over, we do if game state is equal to one, we do the good stuff. Otherwise, if game state is equal to zero, which means not started yet, we check to see if the motherfucking key, return key is being pressed. If so, we enter the game playing state. 
and here we draw our bullshit based on what state we are currently in. Nothing amazing. Uh, I added a ready wait state, which is a state uh, before the game starts. So what do I got here? Just a little. It's a little state that waits for a certain period of time. Uh, Four point three seconds. Plays a little song, and you know tells the user to get ready because the ball is going to be launched and you're going to have to play the fucking game. And here comes the siren again. Welcome back, Mr. Siren. I missed you. Um, what else we got here? All right. So here, game state zero is the uh, title screen state and if we press return we start the round and uh, if the game stays equal to three that's the wait state so we check to see we update the current wait time we check to see if it's greater than the ready wait time and if so we enter the game play state now in the start ground function here uh, it's just a uh, private member function of game that i added to organize things we set the current wait time to zero we reset the wait time we play the uh, the ready sound, and we set the game state equal to three, which is the wait state, uh, the ready wait, which enters here every frame. Then what else? Sprite codex. I added the draw ready message sprite here, and the reason why I added that function is for lives, basically, because when you die, uh, the game is going to reset. Uh, to a certain degree the ball is going to come up again so i wanted to add a little delay for the user to be able to get ready for the next uh, go the next round so what i do here is i add lives so i added oh, i added a class actually life counter and it just keeps track of the amount of lives it has a vec2 giving the position of where the uh, the indicator is drawn on the screen and it has a float to be the spacing between icons in the indicator. And there's a function, consume life, and that just decrements the life and uh, returns true if there was a life to consume. And draw, all that does is it draws a, a row of poos indicating how many lives you have left. And what do we got here? Of course, to inspect codec, I add the poo. In game.h, I do what? Add the life counter. Game.cpp. Initialize the life counter. Uh, so now instead of setting game state equal to 2, I call start round. And start round is going to do one of two things. It's going to do consume life. If consume life returns true, then we set the current wait time, do the thing, Set game state equal to three. Otherwise, we set game state equal to two, meaning end of game. Uh, so now, when you die, you call start round to restart it again, and it'll either restart or it will end the game depending on if there was any life left. And then in here, you know, in the drawing, we have to add the life counter, which is drawn uh, if we're in the playing state or in the waiting state. It's not drawn at the end of the game, it's not drawing at the title screen. Alright, now we're almost done. Reset ball start position on death. So one thing that I fucked up, kind of. Here we go, we add a uh, default constructor to the ball. And in game.h here, what do we got here? We add a function called reset ball. And in game.cpp, instead of initializing the ball like this, I, re I leave it uninitialized, and in the body I call reset ball. And all that reset ball does is it does what you would expect. It sets the ball to the center of the screen with the default velocity, or the direction anyways. And reset ball is also called when... Uh, what is this? When we hit the bottom of the screen. So when we hit the bottom, it resets it back to the middle. Uh, because before... You'd hit the bottom, the game would restart, but the ball would be sitting at the bottom of the screen. Now, it would have been, uh, the Y was rebounded, because that's what the, uh, the do wall collision function does. Uh, so we would fly up from the bottom of the screen at the start of the next round, which is probably not what you want. So here it resets it to the middle of the screen, it's all good. And one last thing I did, 
was there was a little bit of a bug remaining in the uh, collision where uh, if the pad hits against the wall where the ball is, the cooldown doesn't work very well because what happens is it collides with the pad, but then the next frame it collides with the wall and then the pad, then the wall, then the pad because they're they're all they're scrunched up together against the wall. Uh, situation I'm talking about is like this. You got the wall, you got the pad, you got the ball, and it just keeps bounding back and forth every frame. It hits the pad, the cooldown is enabled, it hits the wall, the cool the cooldown is reset, and it just keeps doing that. So here what I do is I do a check. So when you hit the wall, you don't automatically reset the cooldown on the pad. You check to see if you're still colliding with the pad. And if you're still colliding with the pad when you hit the wall, you don't reset the cooldown. And that that makes the problem of cramming the pad against the ball and the wall, the bang to bang diggy, you know, a little better. And uh, I just changed the, uh, the default velocity here just a little bit for reasons doesn't matter and that's it that is everything i did that is my whole life story it took it took a long time i'm not gonna lie took me a while a lot of pissing around but it was worth it i i am quite impressed with the result i think it's fairly polished now uh there's no like there's no bells and whistles like no fun stuff like uh enemies or power-ups or you know shit like that but eh, it's got it's got the basics. It's got the basics down pretty solid, and that is what I aim to do. And if you think that it would be fun to you know maybe add enemies or other cool shit to it, then you by all means go right ahead and you let me know, and I will let everyone know. I will let the world know. But until now, that is the um, that is Fartanoid. We will likely be revisiting it at some point. You know and tutorials or in homeworks but that's all i want to do for now so and that's chili signing out and i will see you soon with some more c plus plus yeah and by all means if you have any questions or comments let me know in the youtube comments in the discord in the forum i'm there let me know see you soon